Kate had with us on DXB Today. Now, since moving to Dubai, uh, have you still got the same job you had when you arrived or are you pursuing your dreams elsewhere? That's one of the big topics of the show for us today. Uh, we're talking entrepreneurial spirit and meeting the individuals who might have started out in one industry but have ended up in another. Uh, our next guest is an exact, exact example of that. A man who came here, worked in industry, uh, then just went and made, met loads of people met loads of cows and set up a new business and industry all together. He's the founder and the CEO of Koita. It's so good, he named the company after himself. It is Mustafa Koita who joins <laughs> us here on the <laughs> sofa. Yeah. Good to have you. Yeah, and I couldn't think of a better guest uh, to have to represent that entrepreneurial spirit. Your story is a brilliant story and we'll get on to the story in just a few moments time. But to that question that we're sort of asking everyone, do you think the Koita brand would have come to fruition had you not moved to Dubai? No, absolutely not. I think as we were saying earlier that, you know, Dubai has this like entrepreneurship vibe from the top. And if you think about the country, it's only like 50 years old. It's like a startup in itself. And I think the leadership, a lot of the other entrepreneurs that have been here from the beginning, they've all given you that excitement and vibe within the community to want to start something and, you know, quit your job and, and try something new. Where do you make the nicest cows? <laughs> well, there's some good ones in Italy. Uh, that's where we get some of our milk, by the way. Uh, but there's some nice ones around here, too. Yeah. I want to hear about what you've learned along the journey, because I met you earlier on, yeah, yeah. many, many, many Back years ago, days. when I first became a mom, and you started, yeah. you, you were starting up everything. We bonded over some video games, and you're a hustler. You know, you know everyone. You go talk to everyone. You're sitting there, you're using every opportunity to market. What advice do you have for people who are starting out their business? What are some of the lessons you've learned? Yeah, I think I've learned a lot. You know, I, I think the biggest one is that, you know, it's entrepreneurship is not for the faint hearted. You know, I think a lot of people will watch a couple episodes of Shark Tank. They might get a, a trade license by the URL. They'll get a little bit of PR and they're like, oh, it's all easy sailing. And, and actually entrepreneurship, I think, is not about the successes. It's about how you deal with the failures. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I mean, as successful as we've been over 10 years in the UAE, and also in other countries, we've had really like tough moments where I'm about to cry and I'm not sure if my peers, what are they gonna say if we fail or we've run out of cash. These are all like things that happen. And um, I think my advice is that when you have a, a tough moment, you know, look at it as challenges and failures equal learning. That's, that's, that's how you gotta look and frame stuff. And, and I would say, you know, just believe in yourself. You know, those are the two big things. And take keep ones. going, right? Yeah. 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 When it comes to challenges, most of it, like, how do you get past them? Like, what's the background that has helped you, uh, you know, get yeah, past good, all those difficult moments? Yeah, it's a good question. I think I've uh, used a lot of grit, you know, and persistence. And honestly, I feel like my last 10 years of grit and like sweating it out has actually been a byproduct of uh, uh, my childhood, you know, and I had a really tough childhood when I was younger. Uh, my mom passed away when I was 13 and I had to face that, deal with my peers and like get through that. And some of that like childhood stuff, because I had to build up my layers and build up my persistence, I feel like when I look back nowadays, when I have those business issues, I'm like, well, I got through th big things in the past and it's kind of helped me get through stuff now professionally. Yeah. Do you feel that um, your past has, has shaped who you are today because that seems like that's the running of, of a lot of people's themes when it comes to entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. It's this challenge. We're all like broken children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've made, I'm going to cry now. This is turning into a therapy couch right Thank now. Thank God Dina's here. Oh. Here to be yeah. with you all. No, no, but we need to talk about the milk. Oh, sitting yeah. right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And we haven't actually talked, which I, I can just say as a mother, I can vouch for this. People love your milk. Kids you. love your milk. The chocolate milk at my house is, is, is huge, huge winner. Yeah. It's organic, it's homegrown. Tell us why you yeah. feel like it's been a success. So I think um, we've listened to a lot of the folks here. We did a lot of like proprietary primary research, talked to a lot of moms, a lot of decision makers, but the biggest thing that drove this is, is my kids. So I have three kids and actually my son, Danielle, had a lactose intolerance problem. So we would go over to the West and buy like lactose-free milk, bring it back, and then we'd run out. Uh, my daughter, Serena, could only drink organic milk. So back in the days, we'd, over the summers, fill our suitcases full of like organic milk and bring it back. And then I have another daughter, Sophia, who had just a general milk allergy and she could only drink plant milk. So like every kid's got a range of milk for them. And I think I just use like my real world parenting problems and solve them 
with my milks. But it, I remember when, when you set out, set out on this journey, and that's been fascinating watching it. And, but you, and you were the milkman, you know, you're the go-to <laughs> man for lactose yeah. intolerance, for non-dairy, yeah. for, uh, for, 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 for a different approach to milk as well. How, when you've got that sort of title, how do you scale a business? How do you go, ooh, am I more than milk? <laughs> Look, we are uh, right now looking at doing that. So I think we've done a really good job of being a really good milk brand. And the ethos of the company is we want to help families eat healthier. And we want to apply kind of my personality to all of these food staples that were hard and confusing to buy. Mm -hmm. So we want things to be simple, premium, and healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So just as we've done it in the milk space, you know, the plans expand into other spaces in the future. Mm -hmm. How does it work though with Sorry, I, I think maybe this is obvious to many other viewers, but I just want to clarify this. How does it work with the preservatives and it being organic milk? Yeah. How does that work? I can give so. you a little milk 101 class, but okay, basically, yeah. So like we basically heat our milk up to a high temperature, cool it down to a cool temperature, and then we put it into an airtight aseptic tetra pack. So there's a full light barrier and there's air that doesn't go in and out. And that's what preserves it. Okay. So we take organic milk and put it through that process and it allows it to last six to nine months. Oh, so you're keeping all that gunk out. Yeah. You actually are keeping yeah, the gunk out. Yeah, it's clean, out. clean label. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know how much I appreciate your milk. I'm also, I have to have vegan milk because I'm non-dairy. Yeah, yeah. I love the brand, yeah. love what you do. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, and kudos to you as well, because you've sat here for eight minutes without Lane pitching to you. He's pitching <laughs> What do you got, man? What do you got? <laughs> Let's do a deal right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to happen. Well. Uh. Amazing. Lane, is there something you wanted to say there? Yeah, it will be off camera, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Mustafa, you've been awesome. We're so excited to have you and your milk and yeah, your thanks. cows. And, uh, uh, you know, hats off to all your success. Yeah, and thanks it. for joining us in the studio. Yeah, thanks. All right, well, over to today's spotlight. Shifting from one spotlight to another. Uh, it's on a company redefining the nexus of technology and innovation in the region through their products for a better tomorrow. This is Innoverse Global media. Hi, my name is Paul Lee and I'm with IGM TV. IGM TV is no longer just a black box on the main wall of your living space or office. It's now a standalone piece of art that doesn't obstruct your view because your background matters. We're trying to break the pattern of mobile solitude with the first of its kind glass and metal touchscreen transparent OLED TV designed to run all your apps that you would on your phone but with a larger community group instead of alone and at the same time we're addressing accessibility issues inherent in small mobile devices. At the end of last month we launched our IGM TV and our IGM TV Plus at the Dubai World Trade Center, Guest Dubai, which is the Global Education Solutions and Supplies uh, Conference. Uh, we will also be featured in February at Web Summit Qatar, where we've been selected among 600 global startups to take part in the Alpha Startup Program on Sustainability and Innovation. We'd like to bring manufacturing and R&D here to the UAE. Ultimately, we like to bring sustainability and innovation and through a sustainable TV that's more affordable and available to all. As a Korean American expat innovator, I feel secure in being who I am here in UAE. I also believe that some of the brightest minds and innovators are also here in UAE and I look forward to working with them. I would enjoy cafes, I would like to go to the marina, uh, take walks on the beach, uh, and enjoy all the restaurants that there are in Dubai. So you have a great initiative helping to support the entrepreneurial system here. Uh, talking of great initiatives, time for the roundup with Lane. It's moi. Now Tom, here's a question. Everyone, here's a question. Have you ever wanted to drive through a mall? Well, soon you may officially be able to do that as plans are revealed for a new shopping center in Dubai by Mohammed Alabar, the founder of Imar and Noon, made this exclusive announcement at the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival this weekend. 
and also revealed plans for a new tower in the city, calling it the female Burj Khalifa, soon to be located in Dubai Creek Harbour. Alibar also said the mall will allow customers to drive through it in electric cars. I'm imagining a drive-through mall. What do you think? I'm not too sure. A drive-through mall. What do, what do you reckon about it? Uh, Mohammed Alibar is always on to the, the next thing. I he give is. him credit. Um, the drive-through mall. I feel like like everything else Dubai has done, it's going to sound seriously strange and then we're all going to be there enjoying it. Because it makes sense because it's kind of like, if you think about it now, you've got the, the, the little electric mini taxis and things going around. So it's self -driving. kind yeah. of makes sense to evolve into something bigger. AB, know. come on, we want to hear your thoughts on I'm, this. I'm not sure if I'm for <laughs> this. Let's, let's just put it that way, especially because I'm not really good with cars. Like, um, yeah, I, I narrowly escape uh, S, uh, accidents on a daily basis, so maybe not. <laughs> I think it's Urban Planning 101. I think it goes back to your point of when Mohammed Alibar speaks, you sit up and listen because this is a man who understands urban planning in this city. Yeah. Look at downtown. But that's why they've built Dubai Creek Harbour, which is twice the size, twice the footprint of the downtown Dubai area, the downtown district. He related back to uh, the Burj Khalifa and said, look, we didn't, buy the we didn't build the Burj Khalifa to sell apartments. We built the Burj Khalifa to sell apartments around the Burj Khalifa because yeah. it's all about the views and the towers around it. So the fact that we had that announcement a couple of years ago that there was going to be a bigger tower than the Burj Khalifa, they've scaled that back down. Yeah. You know, they've recognised the sort of the, the temperature out there at the moment. And again, it's just genius, you know, building these, these, these infrastructures, these communities within the city with views of iconic buildings. Um, a drive through mall. He said he's not going to do another Dubai mall uh, because we don't want anything on that scale in this new area of Dubai. So why not a drive through mall? I mean, how does that work though? Are we are we looking at a menu and then deciding or are we trying on sunglasses and then walking out with I mean, I don't know. I think it's it makes one sense. One of those things you have to see to leave. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll just wait. They're probably trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah. themselves right now. So, <laughs> I'm all for it. I, yeah. I can't bear going to the malls at the best of times. So, if yeah. I could drive through one straight away, bring it on. Why yeah. not? And then uh speed speed. Yeah. You get your 10,000 You're all looking at me like, speed, speed, speed. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be the size of houses, aren't we? Okay, <laughs> I, I, think, I think we've all gone as far as we can with this, uh, with this subject. We're like, we have no idea. No just one other quick one, though, before we move on from this. Uh, World Government Summit just around the corner. Talking of great initiatives as well. The World Government Summit is coming to Dubai yet again. Some huge names turning up to the Sharjah Entrepreneurial Festival last week. Alibar, one of them, Stephen Bartlett, the other. Same with the World Government Summit coming to Dubai next week. And all of us here at DXB today will be heavily invested on that so stay tuned for details in the upcoming shows we perfect. are gonna be there I'm gonna be there being very serious oh <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in guys um, we've got a lot more coming up after this we've got scales in the studio we're gonna dance so uh, don't you go anywhere amazing performance coming up I promise